Hello, my name is Wade Nimmer, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. Each year, Rotary International has what's called the Rotary International Convention. And these conventions occur all over the world, but um, one specific area, one specific time, each year it occurs, and there's probably between 20 to 40,000 people that attend coming in from all over the world. I want to highlight one of the uh, conventions that we had, the recent one we had was in Atlanta. And I had the fortune of uh, being able to go behind the scenes with a gentleman named uh, Robert Hall, who is a past international director and also chairman of the Atlanta Convention. The first picture I have shows a, a picture of what it was like, how we were greeted. And uh, Rotary spends a lot of time, as you're going to find out from Robert, on these specific events and times. The next picture I have is a picture of one of the teams. This is uh, one of the countries, uh, representatives from Pakistan. And there are over 200 countries represented each time we have one of these conventions. The next picture is a picture showing a sign, one of the signs that we had throughout Atlanta. They did one outstanding job of making we as Rotarians feel welcome. By the way, the attendance at um, the International Convention in Atlanta was about 34,000 people. This made it the third largest one of all times in actual attendance. The largest one was in Japan. Um, actually, uh, it was in Japan. The other second largest one was in Chicago, the year of our centennial celebration. So Atlanta marked itself quite high as far as historical uh, significance. One of the uh, advantages we have as, as Rotarians, and one of the fun parts of doing an international convention is meeting new people and also greeting old friends. So a lot of it becomes a, quote, reunion uh, of sorts. The first picture I have showing one of the reunions is a gentleman. His name is Alex Wilkins. Him and his wife, Janice, actually, uh, I met them originally in um, Virginia, where uh, we got to be pretty good friends. He, at that time, he was an incoming governor, and um, excellent man, very nice gentleman, and it was good to see him during his governor's serving year. The next picture I have is a picture of um, Alan Eyes from New Zealand, who is a classmate of mine, a Rotary International District Governor classmate, and he's from New Zealand along with uh, Julia Babbitt. Now, Julia Babbitt is uh, actually an incoming governor from Florida. So, I mean, we, we meet people from all over the world, become kind of the conduit for meeting future people, future Rotarians, and future partners in Rotary International. The next picture is a picture of um, Carlos Flores, who is, um, at that time, was the current governor, who is now um, immediate past. He's from Honduras. We got to be good friends way back, probably as much as seven, eight years ago when I was in Belize and he was attending that conference. Uh, and the team, uh, the ladies with us, are actually from Morelia, Mexico, uh, in the state of Michoacan. And they are good friends of mine, but again, it's the connection that one of us as Rotarians have to where this, these three groups actually can get together and talk about doing projects together. And it's Rotary that brings us all together under one common goal and purpose. Also at the conventions, uh, we have the opportunity to see all of the, I would say, the, the leaders, the leaders of Rotary International. And those leaders include people like uh, this year's international president, Ian Risley, from Australia. Uh, Ian and I got to be very good friends. Um, he worked with me originally doing uh, one of the peace projects. This was probably about four or five years ago. And now that he is international president, we are in good hands with another true leader. The next picture is uh, from the Peace Conference. And at the Peace Conference, which was held right prior to um, the convention, we also had it in uh, Atlanta. But the Peace Conference kind of piggybacked uh, and was able to use the same venue as the convention itself. This is a picture of uh, past president, international president Suguchi Tanaka, kind of promoting the, uh, the Peace Project. And you can see. Uh, He's quite the character. We told him this is a, you know, a peace project. We would like you to pose, do something unique, something interesting, because this is the peace, uh, peace conference. So what does he do? He flashes a peace sign for us. <laughs> quite unique and quite the character. Uh, Tanaka-san, by the way, is, are, is one of the few international presidents. Actually, he's the only president that was nicknamed. And fortunately, he doesn't speak a lot of English. So if he's watching this, he won't catch it. Um, he was named by the RI staff, Rotary International staff, as the uh, President Teddy Bear. The next picture we have is uh, of the uh, Habitat build. Habitat for Humanity actually did a build using volunteer Rotarians from 
around the area uh, that were attending there, and they actually built walls for um, future homes that were going to be um, put in in the Atlanta area. So again, hands-on projects made it quite a lot of fun. Uh, there was a lot of participation. What you don't see reflected in this picture is the fact that uh, it was probably 100 degrees and 100% humidity out there. We were welcomed by the, uh, the mayor of Atlanta. He was one of the keynote speakers. The picture you see actually came from a big screen, and you see why I used the big screen pictures uh, for some of these shots. The next picture is an interview that was actually on stage with Jack Nicholas, along with the uh, international vice president, Jennifer Jones. And uh, the interview was quite fascinating. Um, Jack Nicholas reflected back on his life of service and why he did what he did. Uh, quite the entrepreneur, amazing man, did a lot of good things that we actually don't really hear a lot about. Bill Gates Jr. was on hand. He rolled out uh, his, his new efforts. Uh, the Gates Foundation has been very generous with our polio efforts, matching up what we give uh, as a two to one. So uh, again, one outstanding uh, participation and partnership that we've create, created. The next picture shows uh, our goal and objective. $1.2 billion is what we've raised so far, and, and that would be for polio eradication around the world. We are down to a case of seven, total seven, where we used to have 1,100 in, each, in a given day, uh, and now we're down to seven for the year. So Rotary has come a long way since 19, 1979 uh, to, to current. The picture that you see now is a picture showing the audience itself, 20,000 people in that audience. Uh, they're wearing wristbands. Those wristbands light up with an LED program done on computer. So it's a lot of fun. And the next picture shows up the lighting of that. So you could see the actual audience itself. Now you can see why I had to take pictures of the big screen, because we were miles away from that. Council on Legislation was highlighted as one of the breakouts. The council is when we get together one representative from each district. 534 districts around the world will get together each year and talk about the um, trends and legislative changes that Rotary is going to have to face. The committee, you see the picture of the committee itself. Uh, it, as you can see, it takes quite a few people to do this. And um, Robert Hall was the leader of this group. Last picture I have here, um, actually, show, actually I've got two pictures. This one here is um, a dinner I was invited out to with the uh, Kiwis from New Zealand. They invited me because I was good friends with uh, Alan Eyes and also the international president, Bill Boyd, who's president when I was actually club president in 2006 7. And the last picture I have here is a picture of four of my classmates, uh, governor classmates from around the world England, New Zealand, and the uh, United States, California. I'd like to jump into now and show you a video. This video is actually going to be a video of an interview I did with um, Robert Hall. And we're going to go behind the scenes and actually see what it takes to put on one of these conventions. It's a 10-year project. Enjoy. Well, Robert, thank you very much for joining us. I know it's been busy for you. You had quite a bit going with the convention and all. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I uh, grew up in the South, and uh, I was born in Charleston, South Carolina. Moved around. Some of my parents were from New Orleans. And I uh, went to Georgia Tech, got my undergraduate degree, got Tulane, got my MBA in New Orleans. And then I worked with, with IBM for uh, 30 years, 31 years, sales, marketing, management, and moved around to Britain West and Baton Rouge, Chicago, Milwaukee. And uh, then came to Atlanta about 30 years ago now wow. and said, I'm not moving anymore. <laughs> and I had three kids. We had moved a lot. Charlene, my wife, and I had. And so we've been here a long time. I got involved with Rotary uh, along the way when I was uh, first in a salesperson with IBM in Brunswick, Georgia, which is a town near Seattle, and a lot of people may know a nice resort on the coast of Georgia. When my uh, boss told me, you were doing Rotary. <laughs> and I said, what is Rotary? <laughs> and so when your boss tells you something, you do it. And then I'm going to two other Rotary clubs. In uh, Milwaukee, my client told me, you're going to join Rotary, so yes. In Baton Rouge, Louisiana, my client says, you're going to join Rotary, so I did. And then we moved to Atlanta, Wade, and Charlene's building this house, and we, I'm going to the store all the time, the hardware store, picking up things, and the owner of the hardware store said, uh, you know anything about Rotary? <laughs> I said, well, I've been a member of three Rotary clubs. Sure, I do. <laughs> and he says, well, what do you think about the Rotary Foundation? I didn't even know they had a foundation. <laughs> so then I got really involved and, and uh, 
been in the Rotary. I'm a majority of 25 years old. I've been in the Rotary about 40 years, so. Just for you. So I enjoyed it, moved around a lot, and have seven great grandkids now <laughs> that I live near, most of them. So uh, I really enjoy um, Rotary and my grandkids. How about that? Outstanding, outstanding. So Rotary's been a lot for you in your lifetime, I see. Tell us a little bit. Do you have, um, I like to see if you could share this, a Rotary building, something that really got you connected with your organization? Um, there's a few of them that I think about when I did talk to Rotary groups. Uh, one of them, I think, um, I think really impressed me was we had this um, uh, essay contest based on the four-way test in Georgia, and I forgot how many students participate in this when you're in high school and you're a sophomore or junior, and maybe, I don't know, maybe 70, 80,000 students participate, and we had this young man about 10 years ago that won this essay. And it was $1,000. And uh, I met him, and he was homeless. He lived with his mom and his sister, either in the basement of the church, their car. Or, and uh, so he wanted to go to Georgia Tech, where I went to school. And I was president of Georgia Tech alumni also then, before I really got active in the Rotary. And uh, so I, we had just come out with a scholarship. And I said to Wayne, I said, Dwayne Carver is his name. I said, uh, Dwayne, we're going to help you go to Georgia Tech. And we had just come out with a scholarship called Tech Promise. And we would give you, Wayne, or Dwayne in this case, a scholarship. If you didn't have a lot of money, he didn't. And at the end of the year, if you graduated, you owe nothing. Uh, free. And so he calls me about four or five years it takes to graduate from Georgia Tech. He called me about three and a half years and said, Mr. Hall, I'm graduating. I said, well, I kept up with him. And the bottom line is I went to his graduation. He had special seats. He was the first graduate of this program. He said, would you go with my mom and my sister, my aunt? So I went. Sure. And so I saw him graduate. And there's a little more of the story that I helped him with. But uh, he wanted to be a patent attorney uh, with a computer related and uh, electronics, and uh, he graduated with a computer engineering degree from Georgia Tech. He went to work for a few years in North Carolina with a bank, and then he went out to Berkeley, and just last May of 16, is a lawyer, attorney, back in Atlanta, what I was in law. Well, and that's, you know, you don't get a chance. That's what Rotary gives you an opportunity, by like Wolf Wilkins says, Rotary gives ordinary people the opportunity to do extraordinary things. That would never happen if we're not very true. Oh, that's a great that's it, though. That was actually one of my best, but I like it. That is for your best. Yeah. That's good. And I keep up with it now. So. Yes. Very good. Very good. So um, you are the chair of the Hoops Organizing Committee for Atlanta Convention. Sure. Now, how long of a commitment was that? In other words, when did you actually start the work? So we submitted a bid. What happened is the 100th anniversary is this year. So in 1917, it began in Atlanta. So I got a call from T.D. Growley, who's a very good friend of mine, a former director and trustee out of Ohio. And he was involved with a book that has come out to celebrate 100 years of the Rotary Foundation. He said, Robert, I know you real well, and the Atlanta Rotary Club, and your district's a 5,000-person district. Atlanta's a 500-member club. I don't know if you would consider putting in a bid for the convention. And this was 2009. Okay. So I said, yeah, I think we will. And then I talked to some people in Rotary, and they said, well, you have to commit to raising $2 million. And so I said, I don't think we can do that. <laughs> and what we did, Wade, to begin back then a long time ago, there are 11,000 Rotarians in the state of Georgia, a little more than that, and a little less than that now. <laughs> we built everybody and all the Rotarians voted on it, that I pay $25 a year, and every other Rotarian in Georgia pay $25 a year for seven years. Okay. So we raised about a million and a half dollars that way. Okay. And then we, from corporations, we said we raise another half a million. But it's turned out we raised about a so we put in a bid. Turned out that we raised about a million and a half from Rotarians and a million and a half from corporations. Right. So the corporation is based on relationships. Sure, you know that's all relationships. It's not writing a letter to the CEO and saying, would you give money? That's right. 
You know the city, right? right. right. So anyway, we put in our bid the first of 2010, and then John Kenny was president of Road International. He came down in April uh, with the selection committee, and uh, he announced in Montreal it was a convention that year in May, June, and he announced we were selected. Uh, so. That's great, but we didn't do much for about five years. Right, right. But we paid money, mm -hmm. and then I say about two years ago we really started working hard on this. That came to kick it in, really get going. And really, uh, and I say the last year, and then the last three months, you know, I guess. <laughs> and some of our people said this week, I never thought it would be this way. <laughs> but we had a great committee, so all I am is the chair, and I say I think I can put together a good team. Okay. That's what I do, I think, pretty well. I'm, I'm a recruiter, and so I left IBM in sales and management, and uh, so I hire people, and I think I'm really good at uh, selecting good people. So we put together a great team. We got probably 75 people on the team. We got 12 on the executive committee, uh, and, and they do all the work. I help them when they need help. Right, right. And uh, so if you put together a good team, you have a vision where you're going, set goals, you delegate and thank them. I want to make sure I thank them. Sure. So uh, that's nice. And uh, by the way, you, you did have the committee up on stage, and you're yeah, right. Yeah. Actually, right. You had the best of the best up there. I mean, you had that's outstanding that. staff. So we got people yeah. that can, and if I say I want to talk to the mayor, bam. Yeah, I want the governor, bam. Yeah. I want the right. CEO, Coco, bam. Right. So Delta. Major can buy and sponsor all that. Yeah. So you got to have the people that can make things happen. In the House of Friendship, yes, I have to have a very organized person, true, very detailed person. Can we do? Yeah. Uh, all the events, all the volunteers, we have 1,400 volunteers. And you have to have somebody manage them. What do you do with them when they show up? They want to wear to work. Right, right. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. But you have the right people. You do. And you actually did. You did an outstanding job of that. Thank you. Who's the organizing committee? Now, tell us what that is in relation to the overall committee. Okay. Because there is a convention committee also. There's an international convention committee, and there's a host organizing committee. And these committees really work together. Right. As the chair of the host organizing committee, I'm on the international convention committee. So on the international convention committee, what we do is... We plan the program from Sunday when we start to tonight when we close. We plan the speakers. We plan the entertainers. Uh, we plan the breakout sessions. We've had 100 breakout sessions for 100 years of the foundation. Uh, we plan most of the content. And then the host organizing committee plans what I say. We wrap around the convention all the fun things to go do and see in our city. And so you want to go to World of Coke, you want to go to the Delta Flight Museum, you want to go see the new Mercedes-Benz uh, football stadium. Um, we had a party Saturday night in the park that was wonderful with bluegrass singers. I mean, so we wrap around it, I hope, all the things you want to see and do in Atlanta. Um, so we work close together, and our team uh, has events, has tours, and, and we have volunteers all over the house of friendship and places that when people like a convention or when they don't like a convention it's I think primarily that they didn't know where to go so they didn't know how to get there right and so logistics is critical managing buses is critical we thought this convention center is so close to the Omni Hotel which is where lots of people are staying and so close to six or eight blocks to the Marriott Marquis and the Hyde and the Hilton that you could walk everywhere. Well, not everybody can walk, even from the Omni Hotel. That is true. So I think, and, you know, we thought things, and Rotary and Azure really provides the transportation, but as we work together, we, I mean, the transportation is a big deal, and the logistics is a big deal. But I think overall, I get a lot of good comments. I get all the kudos. The team does all the work, I tell them, you know. Yeah. So, um, no, the transportation seems well organized this year. It's, it's mm -hmm. very, mm -hmm. fairly flawless. I've been to other ones where that really? yeah, has been the major challenge. Yeah. Well, it is. Yeah. yeah. So, so, I think it's uh, hopefully, you know, John Wooden said, and I'm a big a believer of good quotes, <laughs> he says, the key to the star is the rest of the team. So, like, I'm the 
chair, but it's the rest of the team. Right, right. right. Does all that stuff. So size wise, I understand you guys had a pretty good uh, attendance there. Kind of marked up there in the top uh, echelon, I would say. I think it's, the key to that is the 100th anniversary of the foundation. And you come from California. We had conventions out there. Mm -hmm. The latest one in the United States was New Orleans. Right. And that's been, been uh, seven years, I think it is. Yeah. So we haven't been in the United States. We did go to Montreal on 2010. No, it's been seven years. Mm -hmm. So it's been a long time in North America. So I think that plus the 100th year anniversary foundation helps people want to come to here. And then the Atlanta, when you talk to people, you say, well, what's great about Atlanta? And they, besides World of Coach, the CNN that everybody knows, but right. Atlanta's close to every place in the United States. What do you mean? Well, you jump on a plane, you go to L.A.? Yeah. yeah. That's not a short flight. But you jump on a plane, easy. you go to Chicago, Dallas, yeah. New York, Miami. It's kind of a central part. It is. And so when people come to conventions, they spend five days at the convention, and five before or five after, somewhere close back. And close back could be the Caribbean. Yeah. That's not that far. That is true. So Great. I think those things help. And plus, John Germ, the president, set a fee, uh, registration fee of $265 for nine days. Yeah. And he ended it on March Trump's birthday, I think, June the 9th, or June, whatever, nine days. And we had 22,000 people register. In that first nine days, well, we'll probably wind up with thirty-six, seven thousand. So we had a lot of registrations in that first window. That's true. And I think Montreal will say the same thing because they have a registration fee that's a lot lower the first few days. That sounds good. Now, one thing I do notice, and this goes back probably five years before, you know, when it was just kind of being announced, and you guys showed up in the lineup. Um, some of the pro naysayers said, well, Atlanta, what is there to do in Atlanta? I don't know if we're going to go because, you know, it's, there's nothing there. You guys answered that with huge promotionals of things that actually well, should do. So how, how did you work that in? Because you did a great job of promoting. So promotion, you know, somebody told me one time, you plan the best party in the world. You don't promote it, nobody comes. <laughs> right. And so promotion has been critical. When I ask people, and we did this. We asked a lot of people around the world, what do you think about when you think about Atlanta? And CNN and World of Coke, if you're from Europe or Asia, you know those things. But guys, Coke is everywhere in CNN. Right. But said, so what do you think when you think about Atlanta? And we couldn't pin down something. This is it. And so that was a problem, kind of, because we wouldn't say, you want to come because of this reason. Mm -hmm. So we took the plethora, I think, yeah. that, uh, lots of things that you can do here, and we try to promote those individ individually or sequentially, maybe. We used Facebook. was a tremendous, and you didn't have this 10 years ago. Right. So we took advantage of uh, Facebook. We did, took advantage of all kind of electronic media newsletters that went out from Rhode Island National. Uh, and I think the promotion... You, you kept on and you kept saying, this is what you want to see, this is what you want to see. And every time we get a speaker, Bill Gates, Ashley yeah. Kutcher, you know, these are names that people may want to come see. Sure. I wish we had announced John Cena earlier. Yeah, I mean, he was fabulous. He was great. I mean, he was great. So, uh, and you get entertained. If when you get an entertainer, you'd like to announce them. So Jack Nicholas, you know, announced. We had Andrew Young that didn't show up on this program either. So what happened is that was outstanding. Well, somebody canceled, and then you come here, you go, who's in Atlanta? Who's in Atlanta? So we got Andy Young, <laughs> former ambassador of the United Nations. Oh, he's, 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 he did an presentation. And he, listen, he is so complimentary of Rotary. Yeah. He speaks a lot here in Atlanta, different things. You go to something, and he gives us a lot of credit. Uh, and he just said a home run, I think, the other day. He did. He did. No doubt about it. No <laughs> matter maybe it was gone. No. Yeah. He's, so I think the speakers, I told John Jeremy, I said, Monday with Bill Gates. Yeah. And then the panel with Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee and IJM and the National Justice Mission CEO Gary Hogan and the National Coach. Well, you can't beat Monday. Yeah. But then Tuesday. Yeah. Back to right. We have James Quincy, the CEO of Coca Cola. Yeah. You have Andrew Young, and we had one more missing somebody. Uh, Jack was in Nicholas. Jack Nicholas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Daddy. He was one of them. So, yeah. you know, I think, uh, I think the content speaks to the venture. 
I've noticed that too. One other thing I have to compliment you on, as the general sessions go on, generally speaking at a convention, you start seeing fewer and fewer people, more and more empty seats. Yeah, yeah. You kept them full almost the whole week. Yeah, down there. It was yeah. amazing. Uh, you can't see sometimes. you got these lights and you yeah. can't see. But the day when our committee was yeah, ready, yeah, after all the they did, yeah. I looked down there because I was up there. And duh, all the way down. Yeah. It was a sea of people. Yeah, you don't even see was. that. You can see them. You so in this, this uh, session, uh, area holds 23,000. So... Uh, I couldn't believe that many people. Though. Yeah, no, no, outstanding. This is getting towards the end of the day here. So yeah, you did a great job. Yeah. Now, tell us timing wise. Do you have any idea how many hours it takes of volunteer time to actually put on a convention? No, no idea. <laughs> Too many hours. Really I mean, I was yeah. a director, as you know, for a couple of years. Right. Mm -hmm. And the second year that I was a director, was it? I was really getting heavy on this like two years ago, right? And then this last year, I haven't worked in three years. So it's, it's a lot of time. It is a lot of time. Yeah. It is a lot of time. I, I knew that. And uh, by the way, you promoted it and uh, made a big difference too. Well, I think, I think every conference I was at, you promoted it and you got the sign ups. Yeah, it was really good. And they all wanted to help you out. I mean, that was one thing I have to give you compliments on is that when you asked, People also they do, you know. go, how can we help you? But you got to make them aware. Mm -hmm. you gotta make them. Now you got to you got to find them. Well, the other one, too, is your personality. People are willing to work to help you out. So we went to Tallahassee about two months ago, and I asked him, come on. You know, and a lot of first-timers. And the guy comes up to me today and says, you had not asked us in Tallahassee about digital country. You go, I'm in the volunteer. That's right. And they get some out of volunteer. Yeah, they do. So here's my deal. We've worked hard the last two or three years. And I believe this. As you're planning this convention, this big deal, you meet a lot of great people on the way. Right. And as you're doing good in the world, you meet a lot of good people on the way. That's been fun for me. It's been great. So I got one last question. Okay. Time for you. So tell me, how was it that you organized or were lucky enough to actually have John Germ as the president for the convention? Well, what I was picked before John Germ was picked. <laughs> so he really inherited me. But I'm telling you, we talk, text every day. He couldn't be, he's a life and fun to work with. So I've enjoyed working with him. Yeah. Great guy. Great guy. Well organized too from what I've seen. It. He's a communicator. He never leaves you hanging. He doesn't. He listens, he makes a decision, we move forward, and he thanks you. That's it. That's all you care about. <laughs> exactly. So Robert, thank you very much. Thanks. I sure appreciate it. I hope you get back to work. So. Yeah, but it's been great talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time.